Srdačan pozdrav, dobrodošli u novo izdanje podcasta Bura. Sa mnom danas u studiju jedan stvarno zanimljiv gost, gospodin Dan Orjan, direktor odjela za Balkan u Ministarstvu vanjskih poslova Izraela. Mr. Orjan, welcome to podcast Bura. Uh, I just said in, in Croatian who, who you actually are. You are working, or you are a head of a department for Balkans in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the State of Israel. Uh, welcome, welcome to Mostar, welcome to Podcast Bura. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. I must say that when we say Balkans in our ministry, it's not what we call Balkans in geography. Mm-hmm. It's only countries which are still not part of the European Union. Uh, you know, in 91, when, when uh, the collapse of uh, Yugoslavia into six countries, um, four of them stayed with me, as I say. Two of them went to the European Union. Mm. So Croatia and Slo- uh, Slo- Slovakia, uh, Slovenia are not, are not mine. And, um, um, but I got a compensation. I got also Albania. So yeah. I'm dealing also <laughs> with Albania now also Kosovo. Uh, yeah. You have a really rich experience um, working in the Balkans countries. Uh, can you share a little bit more with our viewers? What have you done? Previously, well, of course. First of all, uh, uh, before before the Balkans, I started the work in the ministry in ninety one. Before that, I was a student at the Hebrew University, and also at Winget Institute to become a trainer of gymnastics. But that's for another story. So I studied at the Hebrew University Russian studies, uh, wrote my master degree in Russian in Moscow. Uh, the topic was a reunification of Germany from the Russian point of view, which was very interesting. I sat there for a few months. Uh, one of the foundations in Israel gave me the money for that, the Rothschild Foundation. And I wrote the thesis, which was really interesting at that time, about uh, how the Russians saw the reunification of Germany. And it was not far away from that. Uh, I entered the ministry, as I said, in 91. I was a cadet. This is the, the official way to enter the foreign mm-hmm. ministry in Israel. And after the short time as a cadet, Um, I was sent, uh, the first posting I had was actually to Russia. I was the cultural attaché in Moscow for five years. Then I came back to Israel and I was in the department in the ministry dealing with culture. Actually, I was the head of the desk of literature. We have a desk of literature in the ministry with the idea of promoting literature and Israeli uh, writing around the world. So it's going to big book fairs and having Israel as a guest country in book fairs, sending authors, writers, poets, uh, promoting translation of Hebrew literature to different languages. And this happened also in the Balkans, I'm happy to say. And then I was uh, five years uh, culture attaché in Moscow. Then coming uh, back f- f- uh, from there, I was five years the um, um, uh, deputy ambassador in Denmark. And in the last uh, 11 years, I'm dealing with the Balkans as head of the department dealing with the Balkans. And seven years out of this period, I was also the non-resident ambassador to North Macedonia. So you know the region really, really well. Well, uh, you know, also the region is changing, but certainly I have a lot of experience here and I got to, uh, you know, to uh, grow up together with, uh, with, uh, with the region and see the changes. Um, It's, uh, I think 10 years ago was the first, 10 years ago, I was here in Mostar, actually, also on the bridge, um, with, uh, actually with my, uh, with my chefs, which are now ambassadors in other places, uh, for the first time. And since then, haven't returned to Mostar until, uh, Until now? Ago. No, actually, two ah. weeks ago, I came yes, because we yes, have yes, this yes, special yes, project. Yes, yes, yes. And for the project, I came to take some pictures together with a young guy with special needs. His name is Shmulik. He's a great guy. He's also a photographer. We came together to take pictures with the stars of Zrinsky and with uh, Lana Puda, the uh, famous uh, swimmer. She's amazing. Yeah. Uh, we are going to talk about okay. a bit more ab- about yes. this particular project, but... Um, Prior to that, yeah. so you came here for the Mostar Fair. You had uh, exhibitions of your fo- f- photos mm-hmm. there. Um, what's the main main thing uh, that you saw on the fair? What what's something that you would like to emphasize? Well, first of all, it's a I'll say uh, it's a big honor for Israel 
to be a guest uh, guest uh, uh, guest country in in uh, most affair in the 10 years i'm uh, head of the department we never had israel so present in such an important event in the balkans we had lots of visits of prime ministers of ministers of of presidents i think during these 10 years i think i met almost all the prime ministers and presidents of the countries around Uh, you know, escorting them when they're in Israel and, and, and arranging their visits, making sure that they will see all the relevant, innovative things we have to share and, uh, and, and to show. Um, but certainly coming here to the fair and, and having Israel and the big Israeli flag really, you know, moves you when you see that it's really, really special. And of course, uh, I think that the um, amazing things done here By, by the Chamber of Commerce, led by uh, uh, Mr. Kabiri, and the change in alumini and the success around it, everything that all the waves that came out of this success are really putting us in a different place. It's really an um, important change, I would say. Uh, I mean, Israel was just five years ago, six years ago, it was a con- distant country far away. Uh, that we here didn't think about much uh, certainly wasn't present here right. in in almost any way uh, but now with these uh, economical economic ties and cultural ties and uh, sports ties mm-hmm. all growing uh, what do you think where it will all lead well I think first of all the potential is huge I see potential almost in every field uh, you talk to me about tourism and I see the amazing places here. I mean, how come there are not hundreds of thousands of Israelis? They, Israeli loves to travel. They go, like, at a certain moment, we had almost a million people going to Turkey every year. And uh, here it's much nicer. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> so uh, there is no reason. We have around 70,000 people going every, um, uh, every year to, to Little Montenegro. Uh, and, of course, we have something. I think it's now back to 15 direct flights to, to uh, Serbia. every week so basically there is a potential here a potential first of all in tourism but in every field that you can think of there's a lot to a lot to explore and to do together I'm thinking about health I'm thinking about a lot of things that we do today in Israel on the on the health system that can be very beneficial from what I see in the region I was for seven years in North Macedonia we brought leading figures to look at the system of health there and And to recommend about things that can be done together che- checking the possibilities of, of joint ventures in the field of health there's so much to do and of course if we can find also the ways to to have a bridge not just in culture and education and academics uh, but also in uh, things of impact like this exhibition like working with people with special needs together there's a lot a lot of Of experience that we gained in the last years in Israel we have a competition of innovation about autism in Israel this is something that would be amazing to do as partnership with Bosnia and Herzegovina we have um, um, a lot of competitions for youth in robotics which is like a big hit in Israel like there are so many things that we can do even you know small things like a check a checkmate we have wonderful things turnerships which were uh, 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 championships that we did already with some Balkan countries and I think Bos and Herz of certainly should be one of them we have wonderful projects even connecting football and uh, studying uh, uh, mathematics all kinds of very interesting things and uh, it's time that we you know open the folders and, and sit together and and find ways to cooperate why do you think Bos and Herz go in a didn't uh, develop stronger uh, mm-hmm. relationship with Israel in the meantime I mean but I think I think first of all it's a good question and we have to think about it it's, it's not obvious because we're close there's such a big potential I think first of all there was a political moment a political moment where some of, of, of the leaders here were less uh, um, close to the idea of of working with Israel as they were working with some of our enemies and And especially it's not a secret with Iran. Um, the feeling was that they're having some kind of tilt towards Iran. And I suppose the Iranians were saying also, you know, you shouldn't work with Israel. Um, it's actually quite a weird situation that you have a country in the world that is saying that another country should not exist. Not, not that it should have, you know, less territory. It should not exist. 
and at the same time, this country is also creating nuclear weapons, might uh, ask yourself why they need it. So basically, this is, I think this is part of the reason. The second one is that it was not stable here. Let's be honest. I mean, it's not yet stable. I think it's going the right direction towards being more stable, more accepting, more inclusive here, more giving, you know, right to every citizen to have his own representation as well. Mm -hmm. But in the process of getting there, the feeling in Israel, you know, if you're a businessman and you want to open your, let's say, company of medicine, okay, of uh, uh, medications, where would you do it? In a place which is, you know, stable and that you're sure that Israel is supported and that you feel comfortable that it's not corrupted. All this was less the case here. So for Israeli businessmen, which everything is open to them, they have to choose. And as long as they see that this is a situation here, and certainly with the support of Iran here to certain elements, why should you come? Yeah, but it's still, it's... But this is changing. So I'm saying it mm-hmm. started changing a few years ago, and it, I see already more and more Israelis interested. I'm, I'm getting a lot of since I'm, everybody knows me for, for my dealing with the Balkans. I, I get questions from, from business people. Is it safe? Who should we work with? How do we do it? So basically... Until What do you few, tell them? I'm saying until a few years ago, I was very reluctant. I would say, you know, uh, let me offer you other places. Honestly, because again, the situation here was not stable. And I don't want to send an Israeli businessman here or give him a recommendation to work when I'm not sure that he really has a future here. So the moment we saw the change... Everything is changing. And you saw, in, if you've been to the Israeli boot, uh, boot, you could see leading, really, three of the leading Israeli companies. IAI is the one of the biggest companies in Israel. Israeli it's, airspace. It's industry, the Israeli so. airspace, but it's much, much more than that. They're dealing with so many other things. And together was also um, um, companies dealing with health, uh, people from Netafim. They're already in the region, but they this time they came... To look for business, I, I think soon there will be also publications about some of the deals, I can't tell you anything about that, that already signed during during the fair, mm. but I know it's happening. So the feeling is not that we had one big success and it's already the waves are growing uh, for, for more and, and the potential. Potential is really big. Uh, as, as the world is changing with energy, the question where will the energy to Europe come from? Will there be some kind of gas transportation coming from f- through some kind of southern uh, um, direction coming through here? Hopefully. So all this is on the table. So stability, um, this hug that Israel is getting here, all these things are the right direction to, to make it happen. And again, um, I tell people when, when I speak to people now, a few years later, They hear a very different story from me. I'm coming back now from here and I will tell the business people, run before others will take your place because this is the right, the right moment. And, and the, the, it seems like that the uh, conditions have changed enough uh, to make it happen. Of course, there are still issues that you should tackle. There's a question of corruption. There are all kinds of issues. But again, uh, you have it in other places as well. The things that have changed, I think, is, is, is the general attitude. And after, I think, people saw here the big change that happened in Alumini and the honest way it's, it's, it's organized. And I think this will have an immense, immense uh, influence and what, what is happening here, not just for Israeli business, for others. You can do properly things, not corrupted in a right way and, and, and get profit for the country and for the people. And, and when you see that, you say, hey, this is what I want to copy, not something else. Let's, let's yes. talk about this change a little bit more. You know, okay. uh, for us living here, um, when you say a lot of things have changed in the last five, six, seven years, for us living here, we don't you get don't that, that right. impression. Mm-hmm. So let's talk a, a little bit more mm-hmm. about it. Uh, about what has actually changed, mm-hmm. especially in Bosnia and Herzegovina, but also maybe a larger mm-hmm. uh, viewpoint. Well, I can, I can tell, I can, I can, I can share with you that from from Israeli point of view, um, I would say if you would tell me, let's say five or six years ago, 
that you will see big posters around Bosnia and Herzegovina, not just the flag, but saying Ramadan Karim with the Israeli flag. This never happened before. It's happening now. Um, that uh, religious leader from all the sects, all the Muslim parts, will sit together with a lady Israeli ambassador in a, the dinner after, the, after the, the fest, after the Ramadan, sitting together and talking about cooperation in the field of um, um, understanding between religions. Mm-hmm. These are things that have totally changed, totally. I was here 10 years ago, was not even close to that. Uh, and of course, the, 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 the success of, of, of aluminium and everything around it has created, I think, uh, this, this buzz that's saying you can do something a bit different. I'm not saying a lot different, but a bit different. And I think this, this will be the thing that will make the difference. Now, I've entered yesterday or a few days ago, the first time to the Israeli pavilion in the, in the book, in the fair. And I was amazed, you know, the huge flag, huge flag, seeing the Israeli flag also for the day of independence on your famous, um, uh, Mosta uh, bridge. These are all things which are new and, uh, show different, I would say, set of mind. And the different set of mind is the most important. Because if you're all the time expecting that someone will do the work for you, that someone will pay for you, that someone will do for you, it hardly happens. Not in our region, not in any region. And I see more and more people asking themselves, how can we change here? And this will lead to the fact that if they find how to do it, the youth will stay. The young people are leaving because, you know, they feel that it's not safe. You know, I want to promise my kids a better place. So if I thought Israel would not be a good place, I would tell my kids, let's find another place. I'm not telling them because I'm sure that Israel is in the right direction. I'm sure that they have future in Israel, that they have a good future, that Israel is involved in so many impact things, that the research on autism, that the research on cancer, anything that is, you know, top of... In the, in the top of the research is happening in Israel. We haven't spoken yet about innovation. Mm-hmm. So this is the place I want my kids to grow up. And the same should be here. The same should be here. You should find the places, the niches where you're very good, where you're excellent. And to that, you connect, you connect your kids. You connect the next generation. And this is actually what we are trying. And we will be very happy to be, you know, part of this. Today at, uh, not today, I mean, in the, in the fair, we will have an opening with Nir Koren. He's a big expert on innovation. He's going to come and offer to the different countries in the Balkans, to each one of them, to do a joint venture in innovation. This is part of our, I call it, a present for the 75 years of Israel. And every country will choose a topic. It could be... Um, Agriculture, it could be innovation in agriculture, it could be health, it could be women's, uh, you know, strengthening women in, in innovation. Whatever each country will choose. His expertise is to go into an organization and help it become more innovative. Mm-hmm. And we will try to do it as part of a little present for the Balkans for 75. So that's part of the idea. It's really nice. So he's, he's coming here to do that. And, and the idea is that we can find the places where both sides will benefit. How, uh, how is Bosnia Herzegovina perceived mm-hmm. in Israel, in, let's say, general public? Mm-hmm. Well, I think the general public mostly doesn't know too much about. Well, of course, you know, people who read literature are certainly know about the, you know, the uh, bridge on the Drina and stuff like that, and about the fact that there is a famous, famous Haggadah. That's the... Uh, old, uh, old uh, uh, Passover uh, famous uh, writings, which is sitting at the Jewish community in, in, in Sarajevo. There's a very famous document, uh, uh, Agadah, which is Agadah of Sarajevo is very famous. Mm-hmm. It's a, like, uh, like, a, like if you want a Jewish Bible telling the story of the Jews coming out of, of Egypt, and it's very, very old. Um, but most of the people do not know too much about Bosnia and Herzegovina. They know that there were wars here, in the 90s and, and after, but they, they don't really know the details. And, and Are they interested yes. in the details? I well, mean, I'll tell you, should they be? I'm, I'm not, I'm not maybe sure. the better well, I would question say, is... No, no, I'm saying I'm not sure people should be interested 
unless if there's a good reason. Yeah. So the moment we show them uh, Anapuda together with people with special needs under the bridge, they say, wow, look at this place. Not just look at how wonderful is a swimmer, uh, medalist and so on and so forth, but, and they care. And there's wonderful, let's go there. Let's see the place. There's a wonderful old city here. I just uh, took a uh, little ride now and 10 years ago. Uh, it's amazing, but you, we have to sell it. And then it will become much more interesting. Now, there are people who are interested in every, you know, in many interesting places. But you have to make it more interesting for us. This is actually part of the advice we give here. We say, show us. Send us the little films. That if you've been to the Israeli Pavilion, we have big films about all the cities of Israel, big cities of Israel, and the beach and uh, lifetime. And the VR Israel. experience of and the, the holy VR city, experience. holy sites. I mean, it's you should amazing. Have, you see, you should have a VR experience of the Mostar Bridge. You should have, you know, you have the amazing young people jumping there. I hope they're okay. <laughs> I saw some of them jumping. I really uh, shivered a bit. I'm doing sports myself, but you know, this is a bit too much. And, and think about it that you have, uh, that the next time when you come to show in the fair in Jerusalem, you have, like we had this VR, this, you have a VR where people can see the old city of Mosta, the bridge, and the guy jumping from the bridge. It would be amazing. Yeah. And it's so easy. The te- technology is here. We have it. We all know it. You have it here as well, but using VR and 3D to tell you a story. Again, the idea is even you have wonderful story. You have an old story. You have a combination of three groups of people here, three uh, people from uh, Christians, other Christians and Muslim living together, a few Jews all together, creating communities. This is a story that can be told in an amazing way that will interest the young generation. Okay. When I, just as a little example to show you how, how you can go further with that. Uh, when, I, when I was a, an ambassador to North Macedonia, um, I brought youngsters who sing and dance. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted to do something for Bitula to push to, to the Israeli public that Bitula is special. Mm-hmm. So we went to the center of town. Of course, we got permission. We put two microphones on both sides. We put a very famous Israeli song. Uh, she loves to dance, it's called. And we did a um, 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 dancing all together with Red Cross, local Red Cross, with the Israelis. Uh, and it's like dancing together. Of course, I'm taking part in that. So you can find it on, on YouTube. And, and, and actually, this was like viral. We said in Israel, all televisions showed it. So suddenly, Bitula, who knows where Bitula is? Like far away. It's not even Skopje. It's like a little city far away, less than 80,000, you know, inhabitants. And yes, they do have a cemetery at the entrance to the city, which we were working on cleaning. And it has a lot of, you know, a lot of many other things with a Jewish past. But suddenly, Bitula was in, in the center of attention in Israel. In Israel. And then, of course, people consider, why not go there? Let's see. It looks really nice. You know, they have this uh, this street, the walking street, Shiroko Soko, which is really, really nice. And And then people say, oh, and then start such a movement. So the idea is to create a thing that will connect you and afterwards to build on that. So if it's not the, uh, if it's, if it's not the, uh, the bridge, you find two, three locations and you have amazing places here and you make sure that the world will know about them. We'll know not just that they exist, but we'll see something done there, something special. So when we took this picture under and on the bridge with the handstands, the idea was here we connect not just to the celebrity of this place, not just to the three special guys who put all the goals for, for, for Zrinsky, but also to the place. We're going to the place which is important for the people here. And we connect it to what is important to us. We want to care, to care together for people with special needs, to put them in the front row. How do you do that? You put them with a celebrity like Lanapuda. And then, then we do that. And we put it in the fair, a big picture that everybody can see, not just some, somewhere, you know, in a gallery. No, in, a, in an economic fair where all the business people are coming. You should have seen how many people, business people who came from Israel, came to me after and said, what an amazing, such a great idea. We love it. We'll help you. 
I said, okay, listen, I'm going to use it because I need to get to all the famous people. You know, I don't have yet Messi on my uh, pictures. Yeah. Yes. And Ronaldo, come on. <clears throat> yeah. And of course, if you have some while ideas... They are, while they are hot. Still. Yes, exactly. <laughs> But the idea is to get them when they're hot. Not yeah. Later, it's less interesting. Yeah. Less yeah. interesting. Uh, yes. Uh, there were many really important and interesting messages mm -hmm. that were sent by the let's say israeli delegations member members mm -hmm. um, so few of them which stuck in my mind are mm -hmm. we are here to stay we are here to cooperate we are here to make business we are here to strengthen our cultural ties we are here to deepen all all different kinds of ties between Israel and Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, for instance, uh, Her Excellency Ambassador uh, Peleg, Peleg yes. she was talking about uh, how Bosnia and Herzegovina is rich in water, in uh, agri agricultural potential, mm -hmm. uh, which Israel is not rich in water, but knows how to manage water. Exactly. You know? So we here have pipelines leaking right. all over the place. I mean, all mm -hmm. over the place. And we have a few companies, which this is exactly the speciality, to know how to manage water. It's pipelines. It's also the way that you, how much water you use to plant, well, for, for the plants, how much gets to it. Because too much water is also not good for the plants. So it like the drip system and the mm -hmm. people from, from the company were here. Uh, is to make sure that the plant is getting the right amount of water, uh, water and sometimes with what is needed to be added to this. So it's, of course, this side, but also the question of what you do with the sewage and how the sewage goes and that the sewage will not leak. You know, there are a lot of things which are not just the, the usual question of do we have enough water, not enough water, do we use desalination or not, but... This is one of the issues that because we didn't have water was so much developed in Israel. Even a, a company that is making water from the air, like from the, you know, in, mm -hmm. there is humidity in the air. So they have this system. It's expensive. But, but for countries, but it's there. Have, yes. And if, if you don't have water yeah. and you must have it, then it's, it's a solution. We use it in Africa and a few places where now they have water because of that. And of course, the system of, of, of how to work together when you have a lot of small, Uh, small farms, how to work together, 10 farms, 100 farms together, to sell together, to buy together, and you cut, you know, expenses. Not just working by yourself, even mm -hmm. if you're very good, because if you have, you know, 100 people selling together or buying together, even the fertilizers, it changes the world for you because you get half price and suddenly you can, you know, you can benefit much more. So this is, these are all things, and as, as, as the Ambassador Pillig said correctly, we have this organization of uh, agency for assistance called Mashav. We are sending experts to assist. For example, when I was ambassador in North Macedonia, I brought experts because they have very strong um, um, uh, um, centers for milk production. So we brought experts to, to give them additional advice how they can get more milk. The, we call it the Israeli cow is considered to be number one in the world, giving the highest productivity. And it's not just because it lives in Israel. It's because we use the science to learn how to do that. When is the best hour that, that the cow should be fed? You know, what should she eat? You know, the whole, the whole thing around it. How many hours should she walk? You know, all kinds of... Sounds like, you know, well, let the cow... No, maybe if, she, if, if the cow walks two hours, it's better than, you know, that's it. How much time in the sun, you know? So you get it like uh, as a system. And the experts went, I think, to 70 different places in North Macedonia to give them advice. You don't have to take the advice. Yeah. I mean, we are sharing. That's the idea. And this organization was created because Israel believes in sharing information. And we believe that out of this sharing, we get new friends and new partnerships. And it's win-win for All the, all the partners. For many years, we did it also with the Palestinians whenever they were ready. But unfortunately, not always they're ready even to get good uh, instructors and, 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 and assistance. So this is unfortunate, but I hope, I hope it will change as well. I'm very optimistic also about our region. Uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about Israel. So 75 years uh -huh. uh, this year yes. uh, of 
the independence of, of Israel, existence of the state of Israel. Right. Um, it was such a huge development, uh, Israel. I mean, it's a world's leading country in many sectors. But what I see, uh, what I saw during the fair and talking to people. with people uh, from Israel like yourself is uh, this uh, entrepreneur entrepreneur uh, mentality mm. so uh, business mentality which is uh, somewhat different than what we have here so my question is uh, how did israel become mm -hmm. through the years to what it is today well uh, people will tell you will tell you different stories but i think there are three elements which are very strong one necessity The fact that we didn't have enough water, we didn't have enough uh, good soil. So you have to find solutions because you have to get your bread somehow. So this was one. The second, out of this necessity and the fact that there were such attacks on Israel and fights and, and wars, we have a very strong army. And uh, every boy and girl, men and women have to serve in the army, men for three years, women for two years. And um, this is also something that changes the, the population at the age of 18, Instead of thinking first about my trip around the world, I'm thinking about defending my country. Also, add, add something. And the army is one of the biggest hubs for innovation. Mm. Because we are all the time looking, you know, small country with a small army against so many armies around. You must be much more sophisticated. So we developed, for example, one of the things that was developed a few years ago was this anti-missile system which actually now saves so many lives and actually postpones also wars. Because, let's say, uh, a few days ago, there were again rockets sent to Israel from Gaza. Rockets. Think about it. You didn't have that for years here. At the same time that we were sitting at the, at the fair, we had rockets attack on Israel. So we have this system which targets the rockets when they're in the air. So this was, of course, saving lives for first, Second, if you don't have casualties, you don't have to immediately react. We will react. We will find the right moment. But then it gives you and the leaders a space to look for the right, you know, goals, to see what should be the next stage. But first of all, it saves lives. And it's so sophisticated that you know if it's going to fall, let's say, in a desert, you don't touch it. You know where it's going to fall where the missile will fall. So in a way, using innovative thinking, you got solution for, uh, for this crisis. Of course, it's not instead of dealing with a problem. We have to stop them from shooting, but this will happen, I'm sure, I'm sure. But again, when they do not succeed to cause damage, and it costs them a lot, you understand the, the meaning of that. Um, so I would say uh, this, these are the two things, the army and mm -hmm. the necessity. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, there is what we call the effect of, of uh, we call them the unicorn now, but, but, but the effect of success, which I hope will happen here as well now, after we had this wonderful success of Alumini. The same way in Israel, when you had a few startups that made it, really made it, and got millions of dollars, every mother said, I don't want my son just to be a doctor in a hospital like they did before, or to be an engineer. We want them to have a startup. Yeah. So be like engaging into the startup uh, um, region became a huge issue in Israel. Everybody wants to have his own startup. And when you have that, people are looking for ideas. And then you have lots of hubs, lots of centers, lots of um, uh, um, accelerators, which take the young, young kids after school, even sometimes during school, Tell them, do you have a good idea? Come and we'll show you how to take your idea and make it into a product and then to a company. And you have a lot of experts in Israel, like Nir Koran that will come here, like Michael Mizrahi, which is coming tonight. We'll, come, we'll be speaking at the fair as well. He actually had a little hub. And every year, seven new groups of four or five youngsters came out with product that got lots of funding. So it's a process. But after you have... One or two, we call unicorn is a hundred, you know, but before you become a unicorn, first you have little successes and the little successes and people behind them. I think one of the biggest success in Israel was this company Waze, which really changed our life. 
today to go from one place to another everywhere in the world you use ways it tells you what's the best way to drive it tells you where there is a, pl- a problem on the way it tells you that if the, from the three ways you should take this one and, and it tells you how many minutes earlier you will get and ways is an Israeli innovative uh, device which actually is now in every phone not talking about even how it helps others when you look at at, at a company like orcam do a google after you'll see little uh, uh, glasses that is actually giving solution for almost blind people something that reads for you for all people you put the finger and it reads the text in front of you and it tells you that the bill that you are holding is ten dollar bill and not a hundred dollar bill they're all green you know And sometimes uh, people are using that that you don't see so well to give you the wrong beat. Yeah. So think about small things, but changing your life with small devices and small applications on the phone. And in Israel, this is like the trend and it's growing. It's going, I see the communities growing. Like 10 years ago, even when I started with the Balkans, in Jerusalem, we had very few uh, centers of innovation. Today, it's amazing. hundreds of them and, and and thousands of youngsters looking for the next unicorn so this is like when you create this when you have a few names of people that everybody knows everybody knows mr vardi he's one of the he's uh, three four times ahead his you know companies sold with mm. hundreds of millions of, of, of dollars so after you have a name and you say i want to be like him you know it's like i want to be the this the Einstein I want to be the next so each and every one of them just now we had a big uh, event where Israel gave prizes for special people so a guy called Shashua he's the guy behind uh, behind some of the leading leading companies in Israel everybody wants to be mr Shashua like this is this is the yeah, normal just like everybody wants to be Messi or Ronaldo which exactly we talked about but exactly and 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 or Luka Modric Exactly. And, <laughs> but exactly on that, like we always had like the sports people, the dancers, the famous artists, the gymnasts, all that we all wanted. But suddenly we have a new niche. It's innovative people who create something either that can bring a lot of money, but also to do good for the society. So this is, I think, something even one step forward. And of course, Messi can do wonderful things and we like him for that as well. But I'm saying at the end of the day, if you can create something that will change the life of people, yeah. then even if you don't become, you know, a unicorn, you don't get the millions and millions and just a few hundred thousand, it's already good. I mean, it's already, you know, my grandfa- grandmother, as it's written on the back of my children's book, wanted me to be a rabbi. But she didn't want me to be a rabbi because of religion. She wanted me to be a rabbi because there was a famous rabbi every Friday on television that was telling the story of the Bible. Mm. So she wanted me actually to be famous on television. Mm. To be honest, she's mm. sitting up there now and she sees that I'm talking to you and that there's going to be a podcast. She's so happy now. <laughs> you know, in, in, in heaven, according to Jewish tradition, the good people are getting pieces of whale. This is like the best meat. I don't know. I never tried. Mm-hmm. So she's sitting now and, you know, eating the small pieces of whey, looking at us. Saying, wow. No, he's not a rabbi. <laughs> yeah. This is a bit disappointing. Yeah, but her but wish. He's on, but he's on radio. Maybe, who knows? Maybe he'll be on television yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is my grandmother. I wanted to be world champion in gymnastics and it didn't happen. But I'm using my gymnastics for good causes. We I, have so many uh, topics before we go to, to the gymnastics and the <laughs> children's book and the people with special needs. Just yeah. one, one more question. Uh, so we have this new dynamics in uh, geopolitics uh, because of the war yes. in Ukraine, Russian aggression and so on. Right. How would you describe uh, mm-hmm. the, the geopolitical context in which Bosnia and Herzegovina is right now. Well, first of all, I'll, I'll say, of course, war is terrible. And the war, the war between you, the, the, the Russians, the aggression there is terrible. And the, the, the fighting is terrible. The, the number of people from both sides dying is, is terrible. And I have no word. I, I can't understand why it's not stopped by someone. <laughs> I'm not sure there is someone that can stop it. But, but I, hope, I hope that they will find a way to, to, um, uh, to stop it. And uh, it's so, so sad. So sad, really. Uh, we have in Israel so many people who came from Russia and so many people who came from Ukraine. 
Uh, and uh, I'm so sad for, for, for the countries and for the people and for the damage. And it looks like almost for nothing. So again, always troubles of other people looks to you ridiculous. And, and your trouble are always, mm -hmm. you know, for a good cause. But, but uh, uh, to be honest, when you look at the Balkans, in a way, this war created uh, a lot of opportunities. And the first one is a quicker access for the countries here to the European Union. Uh, strengthening of NATO. Um, I think a lot, a lot of uh, uh, countries in Europe that were saying, "Okay, we can wait with the Balkans a few more years. It's nothing. Nothing is burning." Well, suddenly, the the Russian aggression gave them the uh, understanding that it's either you do something or you might lose uh, some of the Balkan countries or at least um, portion. Of course, uh, um, this is uh, something uh, that you have to have in uh, have in mind. But at the same time. Of course, uh, trying to help uh, uh, people uh, um, there in Ukraine, there's a lot of uh, Israeli um, humanitarian aid assistance. And I'm, I'm sure that uh, I know of many countries in the Balkans that are doing that as well. Um, of course, uh, it, it's, it's clear that both sides will try to have, you know, countries in the Balkans as well on their side as they do around the world. I think it's really important to show that Bosnia-Herzegovina is standing very clearly on the Western um, agenda of, of stopping the war and assisting uh, on, uh, on the humanitarian side. <coughs> I think this is the right thing to do. We cannot really stop the war, not you, not us, uh, but we can make a very clear a signal that, that what, what, what happened here was wrong. Um, and, and we really hope that it will again change. And as I'm saying, it gave a warning signal because we didn't have, except for the wars in the Balkans, we didn't really have wars lately in, in Europe. And it can happen, and it can happen very fast, and it can also be in long duration, which is also frightening. Think about what's happening in the, uh, 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 during the hard days of the year in Ukraine now. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't like to be there. Yeah. And uh, as part of the effort of our ministry, I was sent to the border... Um, at the time, uh, it was Ukraine to Slovakia, and we sat there and helped some of the refugees coming out, talking to them, assisting them with, with assistance coming from Israel, and sharing, you know, the little sharing of the birds, and of course it's very little. But at the end of the day, um, this war is a, a, a sign that we should look at. It's, it's not, uh, and it's, it's a long sign, it's a very long sign, and we should be very careful and see what we can do that it will not happen in other places. And the Balkans certainly has to make a very clear statement saying where you stand, each and every country by itself, of course, and as future members of the of the European Union. And this is what I believe will happen. Okay, we have stuff here, children's mm -hmm. book. Uh, right. When Dad grows up... Mm. Um, We have here just I the upside believe down. it's That's going it. to yeah. be so. Let's talk about the upside down. Okay. Uh, you, let's had, uh, you had you uh, had exhibition here at the Mostar Fair. Yes. Tell us a little bit about, about the project. Well, the uh, the idea behind this this project is uh, that we want to put the people with special needs in the center of attention, because part of the problem that we see in the Balkans and in Israel and many other places. That when you have someone with, with disabilities, you put him aside, you put him in an institution, he doesn't find work. He's First of all, he's not happy, his family is not happy, and he's also a burden on society. Instead of giving him the right place in society, and it's amazing, amazing, when you go deeper, you find that these people, some ca in some cases, have special abilities. I know today of companies that are using them, you know, to yes. decipher maps, all kinds of things, because they get them some kind of compensation. So the idea of the project is let's put them really in the front of the picture. So how do we make the picture interesting? We have gymnasts standing on their hands. I'm one of them in all the pictures. And I have other partners from Israel doing that with me, youngsters. You are doing it always in suit. 
Yes, because I'm a diplomat. So a suit it's, and tie. It's so, it's so interesting. That. It's so, I mean, <laughs> the a diplomat also, standing on, on, on his hands. hand. But the idea is also, we call it upside down because it's like the world is upside down in this moment. And it's also a saying, you know, don't take yourself too seriously. Uh, and for a good cause, I'm ready to stand on my head, to stand on my, my, my hands. Our, our first prime minister was very famous, Ben Gurion, for standing on his head. He said every day, a few minutes, he was standing on his head. So that was I his have, thing. Yes, that was his <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, there's a very famous uh, <laughs> sculpture in Tel Aviv where he stands on his, on his head. He used to have, you know, these hair on both sides, really funny. So he, he everybody knew. He was not young when he stood on his head. So it was like part of his, you know, routine. So I'm saying my little routine, not comparing, of course, is standing on my hands for good causes. So we do it. Uh, with people with special needs, with celebrities, and we put the celebrities in because we want those who have hundreds and tens of thousands of followers to put it on their um, Instagram, on their Facebook, on their Twitter, on their TikTok. And when it's there, everybody knows about it. And if you see that the famous players of, 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 of Zrinsky are hugging a guy with special needs and it's on their Facebook and on their TikTok, whatever... Then everybody says, hey, that's the right thing to do. Well, I'm doing it, so who am I? I'm just, you know, a little ambassador. But if, if, if Zrinsky and, and Lana and others are doing it in the famous Israeli equivalent, so think about it, you create a community of celebrities that supports putting the people with special needs in the front. And this is the idea of the exhibition. Ministry loved it, so it became an exhibition of the ministry. Our minister said, let me be in one of the pictures. Let's take the workers from my ministry with special needs, special uh, with disabilities. And we have one of the pictures in the exhibition is him with six people from the ministry, workers, all with special disabilities, together with us gymnasts, of course, as part of the idea. And this is one of the pictures. And we have athletes, we have famous gymnasts, we have singers, we have poets, we have singers. Just now we had the big Eurovision coming. So we had the, many of them coming to Israel before in a project called Israel Calling. We did pictures with 15 groups of singers that we'll sing now in Liverpool. They were part of our project and they are in the pictures. So it's growing. And in every country, we are going to look for the celebrities which will make it public, which will cause it to be uh, viral so we can make a difference. Small difference. Uh, is Israel, uh, mm -hmm. let's say, friendly country society for mm -hmm. people with disabilities? Because yes. I'm asking that because mm -hmm. you know, it's in Bosnia and Herzegovina, mm -hmm. uh, the conscience about mm -hmm. the people with disabilities, special needs, I think it's just starting to gain so, momentum. So Israel, Israel has certainly made a huge leap forward in this, in this field in the last 20 years. Um, and, and I do my best whenever I have special guests from here. We had the president of uh, North Western Pandarovsky was in Israel with his wife. So I took him, he went to the big events on one side. We took his wife to see the center of innovation for people with special needs inside the hospital for people with special needs called Al Innovation. That's a center that is only looking for solutions for that. If you have the center, that means you're way forward. But of course, accessibility is so important. You go to theater and suddenly you don't have the, how, how do I get in when you, I'm in a wheelchair, you know? Or even what kind of wheelchair do you have? Is it big and heavy or is it light and colorful? So one of the things that was developed there is a, a, um, uh, such a chair, light chair, very colorful. And we gave 48 of this when I was ambassador to North Macedonia together with the Minister of Health. Now we gave it to the kids in need that should have a lighter one. This, yes, the Balkan is a bit behind. But again, this is, could happen very quickly. But you need to have the, the people understanding that it's, it's needed to be done. And this kind of exhibition is giving like a, a push in this direction. I don't think that this will solve anything. But I'm saying if people are more aware, and they're aware that the, the, the celebrities believe it as well, then it will be the next stage. You will also have a center of innovation to find solution for your people with disabilities. And so this is a process, of course. Um, 
let's uh, just talk a little bit more uh, about you so you okay. are doing all these different stuff which mm. are which are not expected <laughs> from a diplomat i mean besides the uh, uh, handstand uh, there is uh, this children's book when dad grow dad grows up you yes. are you mentioned a few times your passion for gymnastics mm. tell us a little bit more about well i'll that. say first of all two things about the book because i was i was head of the department in the ministry uh in charge of of literature and i saw everybody's having a book only i didn't have like all the poets and writers came to me to be sent abroad and, and i didn't have a book so i said i must have a book and my grandfather was a researcher of bible and he had many books he was also a cartographer making maps So I said I have to make a book for myself and I I wrote one night I wrote the book and then I got someone to illustrate it and um uh then now that I have a book you know the idea was uh, let's do something with it but my book is very little it's like a children's book it's not like my my grandfather had research books you know with red uh, cover with golden letters yeah, that's a book this is you know this is a little something but the idea was this you know you do what you can so i have a little children book with no you know no citations nothing anyway this little book the idea was let's try to find way to make it also one of the tools to tell about israel to tell about myself and to uh, to make friends and uh, a lot of what i do with this book in the region and outside the region has this idea of who I am I'm telling a bit about myself but also telling a bit about my country about what we care for the book is going to come out in Israel very very soon in a new edition the illustrators are going to be new made by um a deaf illustrator mm. and the father will have a device on his ear because the deaf the, the mm. uh, this and so he thought the father should have that and in every page there's a be, going to be a QR code and when you will scan the QR code in your phone you will see someone doing the sign language telling the story so this is one example but like a few months ago we published here uh, the book when when grid grows up in hebrew and ladino ladino was the language of the jews that were deported from from spain starting 1492 and came some of them to the balkans the jews of bitula spoke ladino So actually this book which has Ladino and Hebrew is first support for those who learn today this old Jewish Spanish language but also all the money coming from from this project will go for the cleaning of the cemetery and other projects to remember the Jews of Macedonia. So this is these are two examples when I was ambassador to North Macedonia we did another project with US aid where it was made in braille for the blind people. So basically the idea is to take this story where a father and son are talking about what is good to do in life which a lot of it is you know my thoughts of what I'm going to be when I grow up and then turn it into this conversation into a little uh, book booklet with with uh, drawings. So in different countries in the Balkans it was already published. I hope I'll have the uh, chance to come to Mosta when it will come out here and then we'll have another talk. Of course, and uh, gymnastics? Well, I was uh, from from very very early uh, age I was uh, I was doing gymnastics and even got my, my my best time in gymnastics was when I was in, uh, serving in Russia and I had a private uh, private um, uh, uh, trainer doing gym in Luzhniki the fam- famous place um this ha- was well, for many 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 years um i tried to jump everywhere i go so i use it again as a tool to to show different sides of my work and for example when i was in denmark a, an amazing photographer called hesse ferol took me to the most famous places in denmark to jump so i do a straddle jump with suit and tie you can find it online and then uh, it's uh, actually wonderful denmark next to a little jump so we have it in tivoli and we have it in many other places there next to the little mermaid uh, and again with the idea of yes i'm not world champion in gymnastics i did not become unfortunately and it's too late it's too late 
I was I just understood that it's too late. So at least let's use it for something good. Excellent. Uh, just one one more thing uh, yes. before we wrap it up. Uh, yes. Just remembered. Uh, so Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu said some really nice words about yes. Mostar, especially since Mostar uh, took took down the name yes. of the streets. Yes. Uh, streets named by the persons associated with, so uh, with the Holocaust. Yes. Yes. Um, how do you see uh, this region uh, combating anti-Semitism? Well, I think it's a bit more wide than just combating anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt that uh, that something has to be done in many places, especially because there was a lot of bad influence from others. And, and certainly you have anti-Semitism also in the West. But but of course it should be fought, and and I saw the thing that were done with Zrinsky with having the big sign, which is amazing, amazing. The Zrinsky leading club sports here with the big signs against anti-Semitism is really really amazing, especially when you know the history and you know uh, who were the Ustasha, unfortunately, and, and you know the past. So it's really this is a when we spoke about things have changed here. This is no doubt I should have mentioned this first. The second thing is you have small Jewish community here. Um, I hope it will be much more active and it will be also one of the leaders of, of the change. Uh, the, uh, uh, the issues of Jewish property that should be dealt, the issues of, of, of the past, of telling the story. What happened to the Jews here? That the people on the street will know. We did a lot in North Macedonia. Today there's also a, a museum there. But the important thing, we did much of the living there. We asked the youngsters to march with us, two kilometers, that's all. You can do it here in Mosta to find the right march of the living. And once a year to do a march to remember the Jews. They're not here, most of them. So do something, you know, to show this. And of course, when you, uh, during the uh, day, uh, International Day of Holocaust, you put something on your, uh, on, on the, You put something uh, on television, you put the right kind of film to tell the story. When you teach in the schools, when you have teachers from here, history teachers going to Israel, we have that already, but we need to do it every year, coming to Israeli Center for Research in Yad Vashem, hearing from them how to teach Holocaust and working together to have something in the curriculum here. Because the story of Holocaust should be told as part of the history. It's happening already in Albania, where most of the Jews were saved, or actually in Albania, all the Jews were saved. Uh, it's already happening in Kosovo, where some of the Jews were saved and some some were killed. And it, 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 it's going to happen in North Macedonia with, with a program inside the curriculum. And then a guy, when he finishes the school, he knows about the story. He knows what happens. And this is so important. First of all, so it will not happen, not to others and not to us anywhere in the world. And second, because I think you should learn from the past, from your past, from our past, from our joint past. And this is, I think, a good, uh, uh, very important message. I hope that we will succeed to do more than that, to create here also a very good museum that will tell the story and many other things. But this is for the maybe next time we'll talk. Mr. Orien, thank you very much for this conversation. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.